Excellent. So I just added that there's also community people coming um, who are running video projects or community video projects and um, want to work with the core, core community to fix stuff. So that's really good. And he was, um, for example, there. And um, also Douglas is doing, um, is, is a yeah, video artist to some extent, right? <laughs> and so it's good to have these people there as well to actually get us back down to reality sometimes. <laughs> All right. any, any other comments, questions about FOMS? I can do the walking around. Yeah, you can do <laughs> Anyone have any questions? We're almost good on time. Yeah, it works that way. Um, so we are going to, okay, so we are going to take a um, break until uh, 11.15, which is when the next sessions all start. Um, and that's actually going to be Sylvia talking about accessibility in uh, HTML5 for video. And uh, then we're also going to have some lightning talks, which is going to be demos of um, uh, basically web video systems for managing video, um, for uh, content production, peer-to-peer -peer distribution with HTML5, um, and so on. Oops. Yep, like that. OK. We'll cool. take a break for lunch. Thank you. Hello.
distance or you want it closer? No, that, that should be fine. Okay, no worries. Not fine. ready yet. Yeah, yeah turn, it, turn it on when you're ready. And yeah, I think we're supposed to wait till half past. Seeing as uh, we're supposed to be starting according to the official schedule at 11.15, uh, whereas our schedule says 11.30, I'll assume that everyone who wants to hear about captions is here, and we can just dig into it. Okay, where are my slides? Here. So I've given a talk about this last year at the Multimedia Miniconf as well. And last year I basically described all the things we wanted to do, the things we wanted to look at. Um, and basically this year I can report on some successes. I can show some demos of things we've done with, with HTML5. And um, I can uh, outline the further path. Uh, we're by far not done. I thought we'd be much further than we are actually, but um, standardization and software development does take longer than you always expect it to do. So um, I can give a, an update and some cool demos, and um, well, I hope you enjoy it. So you probably all know by now what the HTML5 video tag looks like. Um, just as a reminder, you've got a source a poster, and well, you don't have to use the poster element, um, and the source element doesn't actually have to be inside the video tag. It can be an extra source tag inside the video element. So there's different ways of expressing this, but this is basically the most simple video element uh, you can write. Everyone will be able to remember it, simple to do. Now, of course, that's not accessible. Um, a11Y stands for accessibility, just like I18N stands for internationalization. Nice little abbreviations to get used to. Um, so accessibility for audio and video in HTML5 is being worked on for the last year at minimum. Um, and um, mostly it's come out of Mozilla, the people that worked with me. But uh, the Opera guys have been interested. Uh, Apple guys are very interested. Um, we've had... Um, two meetings with, um, uh, the, uh, within the W3C, one which was an explicit um, video accessibility group meeting, and the other one was the general um, TPAC, so that's the annual plenary meeting of the W3C, um, where the uh, accessibility issues were discussed in a larger context. And just to give you a quick 
well, introduction into what caption, subtitles, sign language, and audio annotations are. I've got some YouTube videos for you to watch. And I promise that's the only YouTube videos we will watch. So here's one with audio descriptions. I'll crank up the sound. A commentary track has been added to describe the action on the screen. Audio description is available on selected television programs, cinema films, and DVD releases. The following clip is from the digitally remastered feature film, I Bought a Vampire Motorcycle, available on DVD. You might remember from last year, but just to remind you. Disgusting. I may not be suitable for people who've just had their lunch. Not yet. What? Oh, that's just great. Just as it becomes interesting, maybe I should have reloaded all these pages. I set it all up last night, so obviously there were some internet issues. Now it's not the right time to try the network. Oh, it's not? <laughs> There's some cable there. Oh, here. Not that far away. Oh, cool. That's a good idea. Yes, you know what it's like with a shoemaker, right? Wearing the worst shoes. I sometimes feel like that. Hello, my name is Joe. I'm a student a working for IBM. I like signing. We might watch this one first. It's quick. Hello. Good morning. My name is Joe. Nearly 150 I'm a years ago, IBM. one of the darkest years of the nation's <laughs> Too many YouTube videos in one go. So as you can see, this one is sign language, and this is actually an interesting one where he speaks and it gets automatically... Um, I'm a student working for IBM. I like signing. Automatically signed by an avatar at the back from what he's saying is obviously speech recognition then transformed into, into sign language, which is really cool. And that would be optimal if we had that for everything. Right now, um, we're actually using human people for signing, um, which normally means we've got two video streams to deal with. And they usually get put, put together in a picture-in-picture -picture presentation, which this is to some extent as well. It's a picture-in-picture -picture presentation of... Um, the signing together with the uh, video. So you can see there's certain issues one needs to think about. It, 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 is a, it is a very difficult challenge, and it is a, 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 it's, it's a topic for, for another one hour long discussion, so maybe let's do that over dinner or something. I really want to report on the HTML5 stuff here, but yes, indeed, there are lots of issues around doing speech recognition and sign, automated signing and stuff. On a black background. We've had this. A vampire motorcycle, available on DVD. Warning. This scene is rather disgusting and may not be suitable for people who've just had their lunch. You've had it twice now. We'll come this way, sir. The inspector will see you now. Inside, the flat is in chaos. There's blood and tire marks all up the walls. A plainclothes officer picks some bits of meat up off a dado rail with forceps and puts them in a plastic bag. All the furniture has been smashed to bits. So this is the normal sound of the video. And what the overlay A mustachioed is. inspector wearing glasses and smoking a fag surveys the scene as Noddy comes in. Noddy's taken aback by the state of the place. Oh, shit. <laughs> you could call that a back. <laughs> What's happened here? What a dispatch. Yeah. I'm Inspector Cleaver. Why are you friends with Mr. Fraser? Yeah. Why? What's happened to him? Okay, now everyone close their eyes and get the experience of the people that are vision um, impaired and see what, whether you can, like, sort of make out what's happening. I'm afraid he's dead. We're going to need you to identify the body. 
What? What? How did he die? We don't know yet. You can have a duck or not. Yeah, I'll have a butcher's. Cleaver. Very funny. What's your name then? Hardy. Nick Hardy. Hardy. Right, well, come on then. Down here. That? They crouch by something covered with a sheet. I have to tell you, it's not very pleasant. Noddy reaches forwards and slowly pulls the sheet back, revealing Buzzer's blood-stained, severed head. <laughs> okay, I guess people want to look again. <laughs> um, but yeah, you get the intention. If you can't see, um, you obviously don't experience half of what's going on in the, in the video, and you need all of that described in, in sound, and that's what an audio description is. Um, and captions, everyone has seen them. President Abraham Lincoln set aside the last Thursday in November as a day of Thanksgiving. America was split by civil war. But Lincoln said in his first Thanksgiving decree that difficult times made it even more appropriate for our blessings to be, and I quote, gratefully acknowledged. So I'll just shut him up because that's what captions do. They help us. Um, understand even though we don't have to listen. So here we've actually got two manually created captions available and uh, YouTube has this cool feature of where you can um, translate um, a, a, a caption from an original source into many other languages and here, well, let's go to Icelandic. don't think I've ever seen that. So we can get captions in all sorts of different languages here. Um, which is really nice because um, the uh, automated um, translation tools that we've got available nowadays are not too bad. Um, sometimes they create funny things. So when I, for example, watch the German, the German one, I sometimes crack up at um, some of the sentences that it creates in harm's way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but um, you can tell that if you've got text available and it's not burned into the video, you can actually do a lot of cool things with captions, subtitles, timeline text in general, such as doing translations into languages where you don't actually yet have a transcription for. Um, and it's really important to be able uh, on the internet to have this kind of flexibility because uh, you couldn't have that kind of flexibility on the TV really, but the internet is a lot more... Um, attuned to dealing with text, to uh, translating text, to transcoding text and things like that. So you, you want to make use of all these capabilities uh, to enhance your video experience as well. And captions uh, and subtitles are really good at that. So um, this has given you an introduction to um, the kinds of things we're talking about when we talk about video accessibility. Captions, obviously, are more targeted towards the deaf than subtitles. Subtitles are more targeted towards uh, foreign speakers. Captions are more towards people who can't hear. So in captions, you tend to have a lot more stuff des described, for example, sounds and music. Uh, and sound effects, cl close, doors closing, somebody off screen screaming, um, things like that you'll get as well. Uh, in uh, subtitles you won't get those, you will only get the transcript of actual said words. But other than that, they're not actually different. You've got start time, end time and text, basically. Uh, that's all you have to really deal with at the most basic level. You can add um, formatting. Uh, some subtitles uh, are being formatted uh, on screen in different locations. So, for example, if you've got two people on screen, you might have them speaking <clears throat> to each other, and their um, uh, subtitles are positioned under the person, and they may even come in different colors. Um, good traditional uh, subtitling and captioning uh, has a lot more rules than just putting text on screen. Um, but um, in the most simplest means of actually understanding what's happening on screen uh, and also in the way that uh, the subtitling and um, subbing community has developed on the internet, it's really what we deal with is start time, end time text. Um, so this is an example of such a start time, end time text file. It's an SRT file. 
which is a common file format for subtitles being used on the internet. Um, obviously, start time, end time, and text. Uh, these ones are numbered through as well, which I think is a bit uh, of an overkill, but that's the format uh, as it has developed. For something a little bit more complex, there is the W3C times text format, which has been developed over the last, I think, probably about decade by now. Um, its, uh, its latest incarnation has uh, just this year been published as, an, as a, well, standard. Um, and um, DFXP is what, it's being, what it will get known under. So your files will be called .dfxp files. And they're XML files. Um, but, um, and, and they essentially burn down to start time, end time, text, just like the SRT files. Um, but, of course, they're being used in paragraph tags. In those paragraph tags, you can put layouts and st styling with it. You put metadata on it. So it, it, does, it basically does the whole um, styling, uh, enables you to make really complex uh, captioning constructs. Um, to some extent, it is reinventing the web because it's got its own ways of doing styling, layout, and metadata. So, for example, layout is being defined in a, inside the head element. Uh, there are different regions being dis defined and how they overlap and what color they are, what background color, what foreground color, and so on. And then these things are related. The, the actual time text elements are related to a specific element in the layout, and that's how they get presented, which is fundamentally different to the way that HTML works, which does all the layout stuff inside the uh, the well, document itself, not in its head. So um, there are some issues that are being replicated uh, in DFXP that, that the web's done in a different way. The rationale for that is that these files are supposed to not only be used on the web, they're also to be used on set-top boxes, in media players that are not on the web, in, in other applications. Um, but um, over the last decade, well, if you think about it, 10 years ago, that argument made somewhat sense in particular if you've come out of the TV uh, era and, and have been a, a TV user of subtitles. Nowadays, it doesn't really make that much sense anymore because everything is starting to understand. HTML pages is starting to support style sheets and things like that. So um, I think there is um, space for another format to be developed, which is in between the very simple SRT file and a fairly complex DFXP file. Somewhere in between there needs to be something that is a bit simpler. And I think that is something that we will see developed over the, the next year, maybe decade. It'll take its time, seeing as DFXP has taken a whole decade to be developed. Um, now let's get to some demos, how we've already put HTML5 uh, and captions together. Um, I'm actually just going to re um, refer to the ones I've done. There's been a few others as well. Um, other people have, have uh, made demos of how to put captions into, uh, uh, alongside video elements. Um, you essentially already, with, with, with the video element in there and with JavaScript and with um, um, all your HTML formatting um, pro um, issues or formatting capabilities, you can already do anything you want with overlaying text on top of the video. So if you write your own JavaScript, you can write your own captions. Um, the uh, issue with that is that we might get a thousand different caption implementations, 10,000, everyone will do their own, and then they're not compatible which means that something like a, a crawler, a search engine, Google, for example, would need to develop screen scrapers or understand how captions are implemented on every single server out there. And that means you can't index the captions with the video, which, of course, on, an, on a server like, on, on something like a Google search engine, are very helpful in order to point to things inside video, to interesting points inside video. And so it's actually important that we create a standard way of uh, uh, associating captions and subtitles with videos that everyone uses so that uh, um, there is a platform out there towards which tools can be developed. Um, and um, so I've actually um, 
published all my experiments over the last year, basically on this page, on the Anadex server. Um, a lot of this work was done under a Mozilla contract, so I'd just like to point that out. Um, so some of the code is under Mozilla license. Um, so we'll look at the first one, which is this one here. What I've done here is basically the same that everyone else is currently doing by implementing a JavaScript library to put captions next to videos. But um, I've made it in such a way that I'm proposing how to include it into the standard. And before I play this, I'll actually go into the markup a little bit. Don't be too shocked. We're really just interested in looking at a single line here. So what I've done is I've created an iText element inside the video element. And that has a language associated with it. It's got a type. In this case, it's an SRT file. And it points to this SRT file somewhere on a web server. Um, and I can actually load this SRT file. So you can see what it looks like. It's just a normal SRT file, as I showed you before, as an example. It's just one of those files. What, I've, what my JavaScript library does is it passes this file. It pulls out the uh, um, text inside it and time aligns it with the video. And what we get as an effect is um, basically captions on top of a video. Here we go. Oh, maybe I should give us some sound Everything again. Everything is safe. Perfectly And because we've got so many different language um, subtitles for this particular video, which is the reason why I picked it. Firstly, of course, it's uh, freely available. It's, uh, uh, I, can, I can do things with it, but also a lot of people have published subtitles in different languages here. Um, so it's, it's, it's a good way for me to, it's a good basis for me to test with. Um, let's see if I can get any one of these working here. So Right now there's a few working at the same time, which is a bit of a bug in this particular library. Um, I can't actually turn off any of these captions. As soon as I've selected it, it'll just get displayed. Um, I'll get to the audio descriptions a bit later. But you can see that simply by marking up your, inside your video, uh, a list of link, bas they're basically links to outside files. You can include the um, SRT files, the, 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 subti uh, the subtitles. And they could be in DFXP format um, because we've added a type here. We could um, provide a parser for different formats. The discussions at the W3C have so far indi indicated that people want a very simple format, SRT, and people want a very complex format, DFXP. So we're probably going to um, recommend to browsers to Im implement support for these two formats first, um, and then we'll see how, how it all develops. So um, as you can see, this is very talkative, a very talkative way of, of specifying this. It's, it's not very read human readable. It's very repetitive. And so I've come up with um, a, well, improved ver version where I'm, um, it's basically the same as, as the one you've just seen, except um, what I had in a very lengthy specification before is, is quite a bit more compact now. It's because I've introduced a grouping element. The grouping element is, is called iText list. It groups all the subtitles of a particular category together. So these ones here, I've got subtitles and um, captions. Um, and later, I'll introduce some further types of um, time-aligned text that we've been talking about. Um, this proposal um, allows you to also specify what your menu will look like. So here, when you go here into the menu, um, you will, you, you, you have these uh, names in here. Um, so, for example, here, let's check the Norwegian one. See, it's coming? Yeah. 
Everything is safe. Perfectly safe. And I've also added a... Let's disable this one. So these are actual alternatives. They're not additions to each other. Okay. Interrupt me if you've got any questions. Um, before we move on, I actually want to show you some experimental code. Uh, this is compiled into, straight into Firefox. So there's two ways of associating timeline text with a video. So far, I've only talked about external files. But you can also encode that external file directly into your video file, um, making it a multi-track video file. Um, it's, in this case, it would be audio, video, and text right inside your OC file. Uh, for text inside OC files, we've got um, um, OC Kate. Kate is a format that in encapsulates text into OC, uh, and it can pass SRT. So we can actually right now already put SRT files into OC files, and we can extract them again. And here I've got a demo of uh, uh, this compiled into Firefox. Firefox is passing the Kate file and is displaying that as a... Um, as a subtitle track. And you can see here the uh, uh, menu is included into the transport bar. It disappears when you go out of the video. The menu actually shows the available subtitle tracks. So I could go to Arabic and it'll change. You can see it's in yellow, which isn't too readable at some points. But um, it is a OC file, a single OC file um, that um, I'm looking at. It's a multi-track OC file, and um, it's providing us the, uh, su uh, the subtitles straight out of the OC file. So this one, this OC file obviously has three subtitle tracks in it, uh, Afrikaans, Arabic, and Bengali. I've uh, made longer ones, like this one, English, French, German, Spanish. I've made even longer ones, for example, this one but it doesn't load. There's a bug somewhere in Firefox that when you've got too many tracks, or tracks, it, it doesn't deal with it anymore. So this one has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six text tracks in different languages. Um, I've created this using a tool called um, Oxy Merge, and um, it, uh, so I first created the um, uh, OCKATE file by using uh, Kate Inc, which is coming as part of the uh, uh, Kate tools. Uh, um, Kate tools is also a package that's now in Debian. Um, John is looking after that, so you, you'll be able to install that. All anything around um, OCKATE, uh, you can um, create. I'll give to you a bit more interesting. Uh, you can install it uh, on, on your Debian Ubuntu machine, um, or you can, can get it out of Subversion, or actually it's in Git. We're starting to move some projects in, in uh, CIF over to Git, so if you're looking for source code, um, you're encouraged to look both on svn.cif.org and in git.cif.org. Um, Kate here. Um, and um, so then I've created OC Kate, uh, uh, Kate Inc, an OC file with a Kate track. It has no audio or video. And I've Oxy merged the two together to make a multi-track uh, video file. Unfortunately, this is probably the only player right now that is playing these files. So we're hoping that uh, we'll get support into VLC and GStreamer and to all of these other tools. It'll take its time but um, it will happen eventually. Everything takes time when you're developing new base libraries before they go into all the tool sets. You have to tell me when I'm running out of time. So um, then I also applied this to lyrics, which is quite interesting. Where are we? You can check this out for yourself. Um, go, go to the um, chocolate rain example on anadex.net in the iTexting. I've got an audio element here, which uh, will display the lyrics. Rain. Some stay dry and others feel the pain. 
and it's the same for video. Maybe this one's still running. Yep, thank you. So we've got that here as well, and all I did is um, implement another file format, LRC, uh, a parser for LRC files, and it works. So there's also potential to apply this to other timeline text formats, karaoke, transcripts, ticker text, chapter markers, and so on. Um, um, this is why I've created a, um, an intermediate grouping element, because you will have multiple types of time-aligned text tracks, and they will all need to be presented slightly differently. Um, so in, in, in HTML, we need to be able to deal with that. Um, so I've got some example files. The only last thing I want to, dis uh, want to show you is uh, audio descriptions working. And the cool thing about audio descriptions is that... The demo that I showed you before was audio, right? It was somebody talking. But um, that's not actually all we can do. We can pro provide that as a text format. Because all these people are doing is saying their piece in a particular time slot. And you can do that with a, the with a SRT file. So what I've got here is a SRT file. That's an audio description. I call it a textual audio, dis audio description. And um, that textual audio description is hooked up to a screen reader that I've only installed in one particular version of my Firefox. I've got to run another one. And um, see if this works. New. The Orange Open Movie Project presents New. Introductory titles are showing on the background of a water pool with fishes swimming and mechanical objects lying on a stone floor. New, Elephant's Dream. At the right we can see the, the, the hat snarlers. Everything is safe, perfectly safe. Emo? New, two people stand on a small bridge. New, the old man could shove the younger and less experienced Timo on the ground to save him from being mowed down by a barrage of jack plugs that were back and forth between the two massive switchboard-like walls. Are you hurt? New, Emo sits on the bridge and checks his limbs. I don't think so. You? I'm okay. Did you notice any of those details before? It's actually quite interesting to listen to audio descriptions. New, get up. Emo, it's not safe here. New, chapter, the jack plugs. Shut up. This, so this is using a plugin into Firefox, which is called Firebox. Page info. Shut up. Page error console. Mm, here. Start, Firebox, Firebox options. Um, every platform has its own screen readers, and if you talk to people who use screen readers, they can tell you their favorite screen reader. But this one um, is relying on a thing called ARIA Life. It's an attribute that's been developed for HTML4, actually, and been adopted also for HTML5. Uh, it means um, whenever a certain piece of content inside a div or a P element is updated, so if, when there's new text, read it out. And um, this is what I'm making use of here. I'm just throwing this text at regular intervals into this diff element at the right time when it needs to be read out, and then the screen reader goes and reads it out. And this is uh, actually the easiest way of getting audio descriptions working. Um, and it's text-based. We can deal with it on the web. It is, it is uh, allowing us all these functionalities that we otherwise wouldn't have. So it's it's perfect match. Um, and I think... Um, textual audio descriptions, captions, and subtitles are really the core issues that we want to solve with accessibility in HTML5 next. It's what uh, the W3C will be focusing on over the next year and will be getting specifications into it. You can see down here that the audio description is, doesn't look any different to, to the captions, and th this will be the easiest way of getting it into, into the um, standard. Um, yeah, I don't really have, have much more to, to say. 
so, uh, when we get to sign language and to audio descriptions, which are actual audio files, it becomes more complicated because we're talking about multi-track audio and video files, um, and we haven't really got a solution for that. That's basically all I, I can say here. So thank you very much. Any questions? Don't be shy. I either bored you to death or I made it all very clear. <laughs> Ralph. You said there's a screen reader for every platform. Is What's the state of Linux or free software implementations of the ARIA readers? Um, or ARIA aware readers? So Firefox has implemented a thing called NVIDIA, I think, which, yeah, it's very, very similar to a, to a video driver. Um, and... Um, it, um, it's a screen reader that's, um, um, that's available for all platforms. Unfortunately, it doesn't work very well on the Mac, which is why I couldn't use it. I had to use something else. But it works, I think, on, on Linux and on Windows very well. Uh, it's a free one. It's freely available, and it's one of the, the best implementations of screen readers. Um, um, there are others, commercial ones, in particular for the Windows platform. So people who have traditionally worked with it over the last 10 years had, had to buy and spend quite a lot of money. Uh, but the situation has radically changed in the last few years with a few open source ones available and uh, freely available um, screen readers. So this is a really good situation. On the Mac, traditionally, because the Mac comes with a screen reader out of the box, people try to hook it up with that. This Firefox plugin is actually making use of that in some weird way. Um, um, so the, the Mac platform has advantages in other ways because the screen reader comes uh, and, and can work with any application normally out of the box. Jason White, who's here. Yeah, Jason would know very he's, well. Uh, Jason White, who's one of the attendees from the Melbourne area, is blind and has done a bit of work <laughs> with web accessibility with screen readers. Um, and he gave a talk at Love a while back. I, he's probably got, well, it was mostly live demo and showing things. Um, but he is an excellent person to talk to about this. There are a few others talking about accessibility. Um, in GNOME, at least, the screen, the screen reader infrastructure is Orca, which I believe you can use any of a half dozen different actual um, speech synthesizers for, which is real, the real personal element of these is which synthesizer you can understand at 300 words a minute. Yeah, um, Jason is, is, a, is obviously knows it all um, out of his own experience, so he's, he's the better person to talk to about uh, screen readers and, and these kinds of technologies. I've only come to it about a year ago and I only look at it as a way of rendering what I do. I don't actually understand much about it um, because I want to solve it for, for video tags in particular. But I have to hook up with these technologies um, and, um, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of information about accessibility um, available. It's not FANGS. It's a different one. Trying to find the name for it. There's, yeah, JAWS is a, is a uh, traditional one on Windows. There's a whole bunch of them. If you look for accessibility software, you'll find it. Okay. Um, now we have lightning talks. Who's up first? Ralph. Ralph, Michael, Jan. One of you. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want uh, the laptop or you had your own? If we do, I might need some power. <laughs> <laughs>